right, I'm going to turn that off so I can get a better look at what I'm doing. This line work. I'm making this up right now, by the way. Like, it's just going to be important to me that you can tell that it's a trunk. That little hatch that you see in a lot of trunks that go to the back. Tail light right there. Clasp. And now, let's put it right here, actually. I don't think that's going to be obvious enough. Let's put it in the original position that I planned. My, my big thing is I don't want it to look like, uh, like a body back there. You know what I mean? I think... clothing. I have, how about two little fur boots. Yeah, that'll be obvious that it's a All right, that solves that problem. Now, here's where it gets tricky. I need to have him. Let's put him right like this. Nice thing is, I think if I move him correctly, he, his ponytail, will be all the tail I need. I don't need to show his face. Have him putting the bag in. So something I have talked about at um, previous, in previous strips, is that it always bothered me when the furry community gets disrespected in anime cons. Uh, thankfully, from what I've seen, it has dramatically decreased since my uh, early days going to these conventions. Um, there's much more of an air of inclusion and acceptance and not automatically hating people for being different. Um, not universal, obviously, but it's significantly better than it used to be. <coughs> I think that will work. Pencils are done. And one of the things that I discovered while uh, going to these conventions in the modern day is is that furries are awesome people, just in general. Uh, most of the ones I've met have been really polite, really helpful. A lot of them buy stuff. Like that's that sounds very uh, mercantile, and I guess technically it is, but 
I mean, it's uh, part of the reason that a lot of tablers really love cosplay. I mean, really love uh, furries. They spend mad bank at cons. Oh, this needs to be stretched. How'd that get resized? There we go. Start with the established character. But yeah, um, one of the things I've wanted to do for a while was start including furries in this comic. And it's something that I held off on only because I needed to make sure I had jokes. Like that's, that's the most important reason not to just blindly introduce a new character is that you need to make sure you have jokes for them. But I have a couple that will work well with this one. Um, I, I've had a few that were ready to go for a little while, but one of the other things I wanted to do is actually introduce them. And that is one of those things that uh, definitely made it a little bit tricky, uh, trickier. <coughs> yeah, it's interesting. I used uh, them. I don't know if they were assigned male birth, but I don't know if they identify that way. Uh, I have not thought about that. So that's one of those things that I generally don't make characters a particular uh, orientation. I let them tell me if that's what they are. Um, that sounds a little weird because, you know, it's all technically in my head. But it's one of those things that I've noticed with uh, certain characters I've created, like... Uh, one of the main examples is Cedric from uh, The Letters of the Devil. He's the protagonist of the first book. And one of the things that's funny is I'd originally had him having a uh, romantic relationship with one of the characters. And it just, something about it was not working, like the chemistry wasn't there. And uh, one of the things I started to realize is maybe, like, obviously, if there's not chemistry between two characters. That could mean a lot of things. But what I was specifically starting to read is maybe this character's gay. And I haven't made it formal one way or the other. The way I always think about it is it feels rude to ask him. So I don't know. But he was not. I don't know, the way, the way he interacted with men versus women, things like that, made me wonder about it. So, he could be, he might not be. Uh, even though I am the character's creator, I feel like it's kind of not my place to pick for him. I will say, um, I... I have rabies where the gender is ambiguous, but uh, that doesn't mean that rabies is actually uh, non-binary. So it could be interesting to have this character be non-binary. I'll see if uh, that feels right after they've had a little bit of time out and about. I'm not going to just automatically do it. I'm going to let them. I'm gonna let them inform me. So a couple traits that you'll see with this particular character. He's in good shape. Uh, he is going to be fairly wealthy. Like That's actually one of the things that's going to come up a bit. I kind of, one of the things you'll see probably as a joke later, uh, it's one of the things that really informed what this character was going to be like, is um, I was talking with uh, a furry who talked about knowing somebody who had... Um, I think it was nine fursuits, 
And fursuits are expensive. Uh, and the joke came out that he was the Tony Stark of furries. And as soon as that came out, I had an idea of who this guy was. Um, the original version of this, I couldn't get it to work well as a strip. But the idea was we just show him a mild-mannered playboy walking around doing his th doing their thing. And um, they it would reveal at the end, you know, but at night he becomes, and then it cuts to like a huge collection of fursuits in his closet. Um, and I just couldn't get it to work well. It had a cheesy narrator, which also involved naming the characters, which is something that I kind of put off doing with a lot of them. Like the cross player, uh, the other guy, I don't, I've never actually named him. He doesn't have a cosplayer name or a real name yet. Um, and he's been around for a while now. I just haven't done it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Oh, need to have him body right there so part of the idea there is his uh persona is a i'm treating it like a secret identity not in the same way as say the cross player who is kind of shy about it or the sexy cosplayer mp uh a lot of the original characters do have names but mp is always trying to hide at work that she does this and i'm always keeping this stuff secret um, and the argument is like, it's kind of out of just privacy or shame or thinking people won't understand it. My whole idea for this guy is he keeps it secret. He keeps it private, but because having that secret feels sexy, like, because, uh, it feels cool to have this alter ego and, uh, it, it's, cause it's not something he's remotely ashamed of. It's not something that he should be ashamed of, first off. I want to be clear about that. Uh, but a lot of people... This might get me in a little bit of trouble, but I'll say it anyway. It's kind of like the concept of having pride parades. Um, one of the things that's always seemed weird to me is the idea that you would be specifically proud of something you're born with. Um, and the way I've always kind of, or the way I've come to understand it, is the issue with a pride parade is not uh, necessarily saying you should be proud to have been born the way you're born, which just seems like kind of an arbitrary thing, but it's rather saying you shouldn't be ashamed of it, because that's where the problem is. Um, and because a lot of people are in positions where they think they should be ashamed of who they are, and you shouldn't be. And I really like the idea that this guy knows who he is, knows what he's into, is not ashamed of it, uh, and just likes having a bit of a secret life. Like, that's a very... There's something about that idea that I really like. And I'm hoping that uh, other people will have the same reaction. But yeah, what I said before, uh, if it offended anybody, I do apologize. Uh, I am always trying to learn, always trying to get better. That is just the perspective I have as a straight white cis male um, for whatever it's worth. And I do think it's more important to be honest about this stuff than worry about uh, being wrong because you don't learn you don't get better if you're not sometimes wrong and if anyone wants to correct me on this please do i'm happy to listen as long as you're respectful i'll listen and i'll be respectful right back cool one panel done